Hey everyone, it's Bertram from the Astro Recruiter video series and for 2019, can we please stop saying that there's a war for talent? When I first started in recruiting, the most common metaphor I learned was there's a war for talent. It really expressed how it was always very competitive to attract and retain talented individuals to work for organization. The term first became popular over 20 years ago when books and articles were published to just explain how competitive it was. But even though the market is competitive, I believe just saying that there's a war for talent doesn't really mentally prepare you on how you can attract, recruit, and retain that talent. So what I would say, instead of there being a war for talent, I would say in modern days, there's actually a race for talent. Okay, not a war for talent, but there is a race for talent. And I'm gonna explain why. More and more employers are actually losing talented hires that they can have work for their organizations due to not being faster than their competitors. And there are four tips that I'll share with you to really help you be competitive in the landscape and win the race for talent. The first is to review your candidate screening process. I've spoken to so many hire managers and they have a very urgent need, but when I would speak with them about, okay, so what is your candidate reviewing process? Who are they gonna speak with? When are they gonna come on site for an interview? They're at a loss. And then they try to put something, to, something together that is not really productive and will not help them win the race for talent. For example, having these individuals that you're planning to hire speak with individuals that they may or may not ever work with, just more of a nice to speak with this person just because, I'm telling you, that is just putting extra steps in the process, extra time to the process, and you will lose hires every time. My recommendation for professional and IT positions, have two max, if you don't have any assessments in there, phone interviews, and then bring them on site for an on-site interview. The on-site interview is really the best place to conduct multiple interviews or group interviews if you want to have them speak with these other individuals. But do not lose talent due to just having extra steps in the process. So the very first thing you must do is to review your process. The second is to know what you're looking for. I remember working with one hiring manager. It took over six months and 20 applicants submitted until we decided on hiring the very first person that interviewed and that was submitted for the position. I reconnect with that individual. I call and I offer them the position. Hey, what do you think about working with our organization? And this person said, Bertram, you know, I do have another job offer I'm feeling pretty confident about. And after your process took so long, I do not really have a lot of confidence in working for your organization. It's so interesting though. We had a backup candidate that we hired and that person only lasted three months. I do not believe taking an extended period of time to review applicants and to let applicants apply and get screened for a position helps you. What will only help you win the race for talent is knowing what you're looking for. So whether it's the first applicant or the third applicant, once you get them coming in and you know that that's what you're looking for, you're able to make a confident hiring decision. So the second step would be to definitely know what you're looking for. The third is to be ready to pay more. In a competitive landscape, if the culture, if the commute or the work location is around the same for most of these applicants and the career progression, they're going to go to salary. So my tip to hire managers is just to connect with your HR or finance teams and let them know, hey, if this becomes very competitive to hire somebody, can I get an additional 10, 15 to 20% to pay this person? And just in case this person doesn't work out, will I be able to replace them? The thing is, is that I've so many times connected with candidates and they tend to go with the higher offer. That's not the only thing that they're concerned about, of course, but if all things are the same, they're definitely gonna go with the higher offer. So in a competitive landscape, you need to be able to pay for what you know you need and what your team needs to be successful in the marketplace. And the fourth step is to partner up with an external recruitment agency if this is something that your team, your firm, your current employer doesn't hire a lot of. This is the thing, whenever an organization, usually a corporate, gets a position, the first thing they do, they send it to their recruiting or HR team. And then the, the HR team, recruiting team, goes out to the marketplace. But they may not have a lot of specialized skills within finding or knowledge in, within finding that skill set. So if it's a position that you're likely to only hire one maybe two within the, within the last year or two, it's much better for you to partner up with a recruiting agency. They happen to know how competitive it is in the marketplace. They happen to know the salary ranges that's gonna to take to hire these people, and they're definitely gonna be able to hone in on the right skill set. Even some additional things you may not have even have thought of to be beneficial to your agency and your employer. 
So that's what I would say. Those are the four tips that I would say to help you win the race for talent. And you know, HR professionals, recruiters, hiring managers, do I have this totally wrong? Is there really a war for talent? Is there a race for talent? Please like, share, and comment below. I'd love to hear your take. Thank you. Bye-bye.